Hi, today I want to talk to you about why police love pre-Miranda questioning in New York DWI cases. Hi, why don't you come on in. My name is Larry Newman. I'm an attorney located in Ithaca, New York. My practice concentrates on traffic-related offenses, DWI cases, within the Finger Lakes region in New York State. Today I want to talk to you about why police love pre-Miranda questioning. First off, people love to throw around Miranda. I didn't get my Miranda. I don't remember getting my Miranda. Or they gave my Miranda later on. What about all the questions they asked me at roadside? And they're putting down all these things that I said. Uh, we call those admissions, things that you said, statements that you made that they want to use against you now. The police love pre-Miranda questioning because they don't have to give you Miranda until certain things happen. Number one is until they place you in custody, they do not have to give you your Miranda. Until they decide that they're interrogating you, they do not have to tell you your Miranda. You know what your Miranda is? You have a right to remain silent. You have a right to have an attorney during questioning. Anything you say can and will use it against you in a court of law. You have a right to an attorney even if you can't afford one, one will be appointed for you. Those are basic Miranda rights and they don't have to give you them specifically just as long as it has the general overall effect of giving you these warnings. But they don't have to give you Miranda until you're in custody. So before you're in custody, just at the roadside, they can have you get out of your car for their own safety to make sure you don't have any weapons and you don't do anything that's dangerous. They're going to be asking you some questions. So the three main areas of questioning that I see are, number one, the driving, number two, the drinking, and then three, I like to talk to you about timing in terms of the accident. So those are the three areas that they love to eliminate DWI defenses to your case. So one primary defense is, were you truly the person that was driving? Because they may come on the scene after you've hit something, or there may be multiple people in the car, or you may be even out of the car. So they don't really know who's the one that's been driving the car. So to eliminate that first defense that you weren't truly the driver, they ask you, have you been driving, or where are you driving from, or were you the driver, and then the admission comes, here you go. I was the one driving the car. Even though they didn't see you driving the car, even though there might have been five or six other people there that could have been driving the car, some of them might have ran off and they might have been driving the car, your admission that you're driving the car puts you behind the wheel. Now driving as the driver eliminates that defense. Second area is, what have you been drinking? They might not even ask you if you've been drinking, they just want to know what have you been drinking, when have you been drinking, uh, what else have you had to drink tonight after you probably told them two. That's the most common answer that I see is everybody says, I had two. Uh, they want to get you with at least consumption of alcohol and or other substances. So you might say, well, I smoked the bowl tonight or I had tequila tonight or I had this. The more specific you are, the more incriminating it is because jurors love to hear, I drank Jack and Coke. I had this specific brand or that specific brand of beer. Uh, it makes the story more destructive towards you and it eliminates the DWI defense that there's other reasons for your actions or the fact that you are not functioning 100%, that you have the look of impairment, but until they put a substance in your system, say you don't take a breath test, you don't take a blood test, uh, then we might have the smelly odor of alcohol, but we don't know how much alcohol. We don't know if really it was your, uh, it might have been alcohol on your person. You might have spilled a drink upon you. It might have been in the car until they say it's coming directly off your breath. Uh, we don't have that. But the minute that you admit that you had a certain amount, now they have it pegged that you had a certain number of drinks in your system or a certain type of substance in your system. You said, I took a Vicodin, I took this, I took that. That's the second main area that they want to get pre-Miranda questioning that they haven't given you your Miranda warnings yet. The third area is timing and especially if there's an accident because they don't want to have drinking or drug behavior after an accident or after an event. So you say, yeah, I was driving my car but then I got home and I had all my alcohol then because I was stressed out from the accident or I was stressed out from the night or the fight with my boyfriend, girlfriend or whatever. They want to have driving while intoxicated, not intoxication, post-driving behavior. So if they can get your admission, yeah, I drank everything in the bar, then I got in the car and I drove home or I 
drank throughout the day, and then I got in the car and I drove to this place and that place and this place. They have all the drinking before the driving or drinking while you're driving. So they have to make that, that W connection as well. So those are the three main areas that police love pre-Miranda questioning on your case. If you have questions about a DWI case within the Finger Lakes region of New York State, these are the types of cases that I handle. You can either give me a call, you can send me an email, I'll be more than happy to discuss it with you. And thanks for watching this video.